Praise the Lord, everyone, this beautiful day. Welcome to our service today. We are so glad that you've joined us, and we hope that you have come with open hearts and open minds, ready to receive what God would have for us today. Uh, the other day, I put up a video on our YouTube channel, and I attempt to answer the question, can a person commit suicide and still go to heaven? Uh, this is something that is debated, but I try to give you my best answer with some evidence uh, from Scripture. Also, our Bible study, uh, Wednesday night, we are studying the book of 1 Corinthians, and we are studying chapter 3, and we are about to talk about the judgment seat of Christ. That is going to be the main topic that we study this Wednesday night, and so uh, you won't want to miss it. Um, I hope that you come, and, and I hope that it is a blessing to you. So we're going to get into worshiping the Lord this afternoon. There's a couple of songs that uh, we are going to sing, and I'd like to start out with a little chorus called, I'm Free from the Fear of Tomorrow. Now, I don't believe that we've sung this before, so this might be new, but it's a very, very simple chorus. It's only four lines long, and so uh, we're going to sing it through a couple of times. And the first time, uh, if you've never heard it before, hopefully you can learn it, and then we'll worship the Lord together. I'm free from the fear of tomorrow. Well, I'm free from the guilt of the past. Oh, I've trading my shackles for a glorious song. Oh, I'm free. Praise the Lord, free at last. Well, I'm free from the fear of tomorrow. Well, I'm free from the guilt of my past. Oh, I've traded my shackles for a glorious song. Oh, I'm free Praise the Lord free at last. One more time. I'm free from the fear of tomorrow. Oh, I'm free from the guilt of my past. Oh, I've trained shackles for a glorious song. Oh, I'm free. Praise the Lord free at last. Praise the Lord. What wonderful truth that is. You know, we all have a past. Every single one of us have a past. And for some of us, that past isn't very good. I know that I've done things in my life, and I've messed up my life a couple of times. But I'm so thankful that I have a new life, that I can be a new uh, creature, a new creation, that whatever's in my past and whatever's going to be in my future, I leave it all with God. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful encouragement that is. We're going to sing a hymn, and we're going to sing, I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus. And of course, that should be our goal today, is to lift up his name. Praise the Lord. I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus. I'm going to sing of my joy since he came. I'm going to tell of his power every day and every hour. I'm going to lift up that wonderful name. Well, you can talk about world conditions. And you 
can talk about all that's gone wrong. Well, you can state your views and positions. But I'm gonna sing me a song. Well, I'm gonna lift up the name of Jesus. I'm gonna sing of my joy since he came. I'm gonna tell of his power every day and every hour. I'm gonna lift up that wonderful name. Well, I don't have time to worry. These heartaches I just can't afford. I gotta sing and I'll never be sorry for praising the name of the Lord. Well, I'm gonna lift up the name of Jesus. I'm gonna sing of my joy since he came. I'm gonna tell of his power every day and every hour. I'm gonna lift up that wonderful name. Well, there's two men songs for singing for me to be wearing a frown there's too much joy that he's bringing for me to ever be down. Well, I'm gonna lift up the name of Jesus. I'm gonna sing of my joy since he came. I'm gonna tell of his power every day and Every hour, I'm gonna lift up that wonderful name. Yes, I'm gonna lift up the name of Jesus. I'm gonna sing of my joy since he came. I'm gonna tell of his power every day and every hour. I'm gonna lift up that wonderful name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're gonna lift up the name of Jesus. And really, there's a lot to the name of Jesus, isn't there? There's a lot to Jesus. He's the great I am. He's the everlasting father. He's the prince of peace, the great eternal wonder, holy counselor, Zion's righteous governor. He's the great, he's the great I am. If you believe that is true today, let's sing it. Well, he's the great I am, the everlasting father. He's the prince of peace. The great eternal wonder, holy counselor. Zion's righteous governor, he's the great, he's the great I am. Well, he's the great I am, the everlasting father. He's the prince of peace, 
the great eternal wonder, holy counselor. Zion's righteous governor, he's the great, he's the great I am. One more time. Well, he's the great I am, the everlasting father, he's the prince of peace, the great eternal wonder, holy counselor. Zion's righteous governor, he's the great, he's the great I am. And he's the Lord of glory, he is the great I am, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. His name is wonderful, the Prince of Peace is he. He's the everlasting Father throughout eternity. Praise the Lord. I remember singing that in Sunday school many years ago, and it's amazing that it stuck with me all through these years, but that must be because it is truth. Praise the Lord. So we are going to uh, go to the Lord in prayer this afternoon, and we're going to pray that God will be in this service and that the message will go out far and wide. And that people that will need to hear this message will hear this message. And so let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the privilege and the opportunity that we have to be able to gather together wherever we are, wherever we live, whatever place we happen to be in right now. It doesn't matter. What matters is that we are in your presence, Lord. And that wherever we are, we can have church and we can be in your presence, Lord. I just want to pray, God, a blessing upon this service I want to pray, Lord, that people will hear this message, that people will watch this video, Lord, and that lives will be changed and transformed by the power of God. And as we begin to talk about the mind of Christ, Lord, I pray, God, that you will put a challenge within our souls and within our spirits, Lord, that we need to bring our minds uh, into and every thought into the obedience of Jesus Christ. That is the goal, Lord, and that is what we want to do, Lord. There are things that we need to think on, and I believe that we need to have the mind of Christ today, and I believe that when we have the mind of Christ, we can have peace, that perfect peace, that peace that passes all understanding, Lord. We can have that peace. And so I pray, God, that you will be in the midst of this service, Lord, that there will be a blessing upon everybody that watches and that lives will be transformed by your power. We pray all of these things in the precious name of Jesus and we'll be careful to give you all of the glory and all of the praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, as I usually do in my prayer, I've let the cat out of the bag and I've spilt the beans. We are going to talk today for a few moments with the help of the Lord on the mind of Christ. That's what we're going to talk about today is the mind of of Christ. You know, we sung about today that we can be free from the fear of tomorrow, and we can be free from the guilt of our past. You know, I've said it before, I've said it many times, we don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We can't see what's going to happen in the future. Now, there are some prophecies in Scripture that we know there's going to be a tribulation coming. There's going to be a rapture coming. There's going to be an antichrist coming. There's going to be a millennial kingdom coming. We know those things are going to happen because that's been prophesied in Scripture. And thy word is truth. But what we don't know is what's going to happen to us tomorrow. What's going to happen? Well, the good news is we don't need to worry about it. It doesn't really matter what's going to happen tomorrow. Because we may not know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. You know, the same thing about our past. You know, I've said it before. I've messed up my life. I was on a wrong path for quite a few years. I got saved when I was about 14, 15 years old was when I first trusted the gospel. And I was on fire for God from about 14 years old until about 22 years old. Then I kind of got on a different path. Kind of walked away from the Lord. 
Now, thankfully, when I was in that pit, when I was in a dark place in my life where everything was starting to fall apart and I messed up my life beyond what I can tell you about today, I'm thankful that God didn't let me sink. God didn't let me drown. He picked me up and he put me on the mountaintop. Praise the Lord and he can do the same for you. You know, we're free from tomorrow. We're free from the fear of what's going to happen tomorrow. We're free from the guilt of our past. Those shackles that we have on, we can be released from those shackles and be free in Jesus. Praise the Lord. We're going to talk about the mind of Christ today. The mind of Christ is very encouraging. You know, there's a lot of things to get discouraged about, isn't there? There's a lot of things going on in the world today that that we can get depressed and we can get discouraged about. And we can sit and we can pout about. But we don't need to do that because if we have the mind of Christ, we have that peace. We can be in a boat in the middle of the ocean that's being tossed and being turned by the storms of life and the storms of the devil. It doesn't matter. We are anchored in Jesus. That's something that we talked about recently, about being anchored. And oftentimes, the biggest battles that we face are in our own mind. You know, I work with a lot of of kids. My full-time job is an education assistant. I work uh, for the school board. I work uh, uh, in a school. And the unfortunate thing that I see a lot of is, is kids getting so discouraged before they even try. They get into a mindset that they can't do something before they even give it an attempt. That's not the mind of Christ. That's not the mind of Christ. We need to have a a mindset of victory. That's what we need to have. Our text this morning, or this afternoon, and we're going to go through a number of different Uh, passages today, but where I'd like to start out is a passage in Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, and I want to read verses 1 to 8. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 8. It says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercy." Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but let every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. There's a lot of stuff there, isn't there? It starts off by talking a lot about unity and being like-minded. Now, if you've been following us during our Bible studies, when we studied the book of Romans, for a little while there, we were talking a lot about like-mindedness, about being in unity. There's a lot of division in the church, isn't there? There's a lot of strife in the church. There's a lot of carnality in the church. And when there's carnality and there's worldliness, you're going to get division. I watched a documentary a couple weeks ago, and I I actually made a video about it. About the uh, the church in Hillsong. Uh, Maybe you've heard of the Hillsong church. Maybe you've heard some of their songs. I don't know. Um, I didn't know too many of their songs because I'm not big on contemporary music. I'm more of a hymn guy. Praise the Lord. I love the old hymns. And I believe that the church ought to sing the old hymns. 
And that's why here we try to sing the old hymns every service, praise the Lord. And, and as long as I'm here, we're going to continue to do so. But I didn't know a whole lot about Hillsong. I knew that they were a mega church over in Australia and that apparently they were a denomination and an organization that kind of uh, uh, went different places in the United States and, and, and they were quite popular. But in this documentary, and maybe you've seen this documentary uh, as well, and so you know what I'm talking about, there was a lot of carnality there. They sung the world's music. Yes, they sung the world's music. What you listened to in church was a direct copy of what was on your top 40 secular pop stations. They just changed the lyrics a little bit. If you took the lyrics out, you'd, you'd just think that was just a secular, worldly song. So they brought in the world's music. They brought in the world's fashions. They brought in the world's styles. There was no separation there. There was no transformation there. There was no holiness there. There were pictures of the pastor of the church in New York. I think it was called, it was Hillsong something, New York. The pastor had a, a social media page where he had a picture of himself on a beach. And of course he had like tattoos and things. And of course he had his pants and his shorts riding low, so uh, you could see something uh, that you shouldn't be seeing. Not all of it, praise the Lord, but um, not very modest in dress. And so this church was very worldly. And there was a lot of disunity in this church. Why? Because it was so carnal. And the illustration that I used in the video where I talk about the Hillsong Church and and my reaction to it was that I was not surprised. I was not surprised that there was corruption. I was not surprised that there was sexual misconduct. I'm not surprised that there was infidelity in the, in the leadership of that church. It doesn't surprise me because they were just secular and they were worldly. And there was no holiness. There was no standard. There was no separation from the world. They weren't even reading a King James Bible. They were reading some other modern perversion. And so, of course, there's going to be corruption. Of course, things are going to fall apart. Of course, there's going to be an expose. Of course. Because they weren't having that unity in the spirit. They weren't following after the Spirit. They didn't have the mind of Christ that we're going to talk about today. Now I want to put our focus on verse 5. Where it says, let this mind be in you. So God wants this mind in you that was in Christ Jesus. We ought to have the mindset of Christ. You know, too, too many times, and I believe that this might have been one of the problems in that Hillsong church, was the leadership of that were very, very egotistical, weren't they? I bet they were. I bet they were. You know, the pastor, that pastor that resigned because uh, his infidelity and his adultery was exposed. Of course there's going to be adultery in a church that's worldly, right? Of course they're going to have adultery in their pews. He didn't have the mind of Christ. And of course those things happen. But we need to have the mind of Christ. That mind of Christ. And we're going to look at a couple of other verses here about what that mindset ought to be. What that mindset ought to be. It's God's desire for us, for the church, for a saved believer to have the mind that was in Christ. We ought to be focused on God. We ought to be walking in the Spirit. We ought to be crucifying the flesh. We ought to not be copying the world. We ought to not uh, be worldly and, and secular. We ought to be distinct. We are a peculiar people. The word church means a called out assembly. You can be in an assembly that's not called out. You can be in the Masonic Lodge if you want to. But that's not a called out assembly. That's not the mind of Christ. That's not the will of God. Because what is a church that does not have, that's not that called out uh, assembly? It's nothing but a, a fraternal organization. You might as well join 
the Masonic Lodge, or something like that. Or you might as well join a bowling team. Or you might as well join a whatever, social club, or a senior citizens center. You might as well join that. Because you're not the called out assembly. Let's go now to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, I told you we're going to be jumping around a little bit today. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I want to read verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 16. And it says this. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we, Paul says, but we have the mind of Christ. Now I want to give you a little bit of context of this verse. Paul is writing, and he's in the second chapter, so he's near the very beginning of a letter to a church that was absolutely carnal. They were absolutely worldly. You, wanna, you, you could probably compare this church in Corinth to what was going on at Hillsong. You could. And there were a lot of things that were going on in this church in Corinth. There was a lot of sin that was not being dealt with. In particular, sexual sin. It was going on. It wasn't dealt with. They were misusing the gifts of the Spirit. They were, they were babies. They were babies. We've, if you've been watching our Bible studies, as we're studying uh, 1 Corinthians, you'll know this. We looked at how these, these people in this church were so carnal and worldly that they were just spiritual babies. And Paul even said, I can't give you meat. I can only give you milk. Because you can't handle the deep spiritual things. You can only handle the superficial things. And so here's Paul saying to them, but we have the mind of Christ. And so let me tell you something. This is entry level stuff. This is something that you should have right at salvation. But unfortunately, not every one of us has it. That is the mind of Christ. You know, sometimes, and for some of us, and for myself included, it took a long time to develop the mind of Christ. We were still in our old, our old man. We were still in our, our old way of thinking. Our old lost way of thinking. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? By the renewing of your mind. And so when you get saved, you need a brain transplant. We talked very recently, and I preached very recently, about a heart transplant. About a new heart. And about new blood. Well, now I'm going to talk to you about a brain transplant. Let me tell you something. When God's done with a person, when they're saved, there's going to be nothing left of the old man that's going to drag them down and be defeated. None of that's going to happen because God transforms your life. When you get saved and you have the mind of Christ, you are transformed. Your mind is renewed. You have the renewing of your mind. Be not conformed to this world. Do not do the things that the world likes. Do not do the things of the world. You're going to be different. You're going to be set apart. Why did the, the Hillsong Church have so many problems? Why do they have adultery in their pews? Why do they have all kinds of sexual uh, problems and, and sins and, and things that were happening that were wrong and, and now it's shaken that whole foundation of that church and that organization because they weren't transformed and they did not have their minds renewed. But we need to be. We need to be in that place where we are no longer thinking like the world. We are no longer copying the world. We are no longer interested in the world. We are no longer in hanging out, interested in hanging out with the world. I don't really care much about what the world does. I don't really care about what's going on on TV. I don't really care about what's going on in the movie theaters. Every once in a while there might be a movie or something that comes along that, hey, that might be good and we'll go and see it, but very, 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 very rarely. Because I don't really care. I don't really care. 
I don't really care about what celebrities dating who. Makes no difference to me. I don't care about what celebrities divorcing who. I don't care. It doesn't make any difference to me because I have a new mind. I have my mind renewed. I'm not interested in any of that world stuff. I'm not conformed to the world. I've been transformed by the renewing of my mind. Problem is, this is the difference between the saved and the lost. The difference between the saved and the lost is the world, they don't have the mind of Christ. They don't have the values that we have. They don't have the outlook and the mindset that we have. They don't have the worldview that we have. So of course we're going to be different. They can have their evolutionary theory. They can have their 30 whatever genders. They can have all of that kind of stuff. It doesn't matter to me. I'm interested in, in having my mind renewed and being transformed. That's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in the Word of God. I'm interested in what God's opinion. I couldn't care less what the world thinks is right. I couldn't care less what the world thinks is important. I couldn't care less about the, what the world thinks is right. It doesn't make any difference. What matters to me is what God thinks. There's too many people that value man's opinion and put man's opinion and government's opinion and society's opinion over top of what the opinion of God is and what the Word of the Lord says. I was, I was troubled when I saw so many churches shut down for the last two years because they were obeying man rather than God. I'll leave it there. Many professing Christians today, they still have that mind of the world. Why are they not growing? Why are they not, uh, why are they still spiritual babies? Why are they not understanding doctrine? Why are they still reading Bibles that, that are not King James, that are copies from the, from the wrong manuscripts that were perverted by the Vatican? Why are they still reading those things? Because their minds haven't been transformed. Their minds haven't been transformed. Why are they still interested in bringing in secular rock music into the church and changing the lyrics a little bit to make it sound holy. You know, you can take a secular song and you can add the word heaven or God to it. That doesn't make it holy. It makes you a compromiser is what it does. And I see a lot of trends happening in the church that are quite concerning. The church is not a place to be entertained. The church is not a place to go and enjoy a concert. That's not what the church is for. The church is a called out assembly. There are things that are holy and that are righteous and, and, and that are spiritual. That cannot be comprehended by the world. And those things ought to be happening in the church. When I sing worship to the Lord, I don't want to sing a secular top 40 song with the lyrics tweaked a little bit. So that you, it makes it sound like I'm singing about heaven or about God. I want to sing unto the Lord. I want to sing what's pleasing to God, not what's pleasing to my flesh. I'm not interested in bringing in drum sets and rock guitars and fog machines and flashing spotlights. I'm not interested in lasers and all of those types of things that elevate the flesh. I'm interested in the holy. I'm interested in the sacred. I'm interested in pleasing God, not pleasing my flesh. But yet so many people, so many churches, so many believers aren't in that place because they don't have the mind of Christ. Let's go now to Romans. I'm going to go to Romans now, chapter 8. Romans 8 and verse 6, and it says, For, the, for to be carnally minded is death. I want to pause there for a moment. To be carnally minded is death. What happened to the Hillsong Church? It didn't die, but it's been rocked to its foundation. There's probably been millions of people have seen this documentary where they've been exposed. 
And they've seen through their compromise. And there's probably uh, what's left, the membership of that church is probably far less than what was there in the beginning. We can also apply that to our lives. If you're continuing to have a carnal mind and you're getting caught up in the worldly things and you're smoking and you're drinking and you're fornicating and you're doing all of those carnal things, it's going to lead to your death. It's that simple. You know the law of sowing and reaping? If you sow in the flesh, you're going to reap in the flesh. If you sow in the spirit, you're going to reap in the spirit. I'm not interested in, in reaping in the, in the flesh. I don't want that. I know of Christians that smoke. And they're probably going to get lung cancer. And they're probably going to die young. I know Christians that drink. And they're probably going to uh, get cirrhosis of the liver. And, and have all kinds of health problems. And they're probably going to die young. Why? Because they're sowing in the flesh. And they're going to reap in the flesh. But I want to sow in the spirit. I want to sow spiritual seeds. So that I can reap spiritually. And I can be closer to God. And walk closer with Him. And have a better relationship with Him. And have my prayers answered. Because I'm reaping in the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But there's more. The opposite is true too. But to be spiritually minded, to have the mind of Christ, to be focused on the good things, the things of God, the things of the scripture, the things that are holy, the things that are right. Where does that lead? It leads to life and not only to life, but peace. Do you want to have peace? Do you want to have the peace in the midst of storms? You can have it, but you can only have it if you have the mind of Christ. So our desire should be life and peace. But why do so many Christians today not have life? Why are so many Christians dropping dead so young? Why are so many Christians falling into sin and backsliding back to a place not where they're losing their salvation, because you can't lose your salvation, but backsliding and falling into sin to a place where they are out of fellowship with God? Yes, that spirit's still there. It's sealed. It it's, will never leave you nor forsake you. You are still going to heaven, but you're not going to have much reward when you get there. That's what we're going to talk about in our Bible study this Wednesday. So you want to check that out. But I want to have as many rewards as I can get. You know, being in heaven and being in the presence of the Lord is going to be wonderful. It's going to be so much greater than anything that we can experience here on life. But I want all the rewards I can get. Not because I'm, I'm greedy and not because I, I want the rewards. But I also want God to be pleased with me. I want to make God happy. I want to advance the kingdom of God. That's what I want. And that's why I'm going to preach and I'm going to stand firm for what's right and stand against sin and stand against what's wrong. And that's why I'm going to do those things because I want God to be pleased with what I'm doing. Now I know what I say might offend some people. I know what I say might not make me some friends. It might cause me to lose some friends. And I'm okay with that. That's fine. I'd rather have friendship with God. And friendship with real believers. And be an enemy of the world. Than be accepted in the world's eyes. So many Christians are afraid of what people think. So many people are afraid. So many Christians are afraid of what people might think of them. I'm going to get let you in on a little bit of a secret here. I couldn't care less what people think of me. I couldn't. There are probably people that have come across this channel and watched me preach and scream and yell and sing and do all of these things, and they probably think I'm crazy. But I don't care what they think because I have the mind of Christ. I've been renewed. I've been transformed. I've had my brain transplanted. And just because you haven't yet doesn't mean that what I'm doing is stupid. You know, what's, what's wise in God's eyes is often what's foolish in the world's eyes. There are unsaved people that could watch this video and think I'm crazy for doing what I'm doing. But I don't care. 
I want to be wise in God's eyes and a fool in the world's eyes. And if you're trying to please both the world and God, you can't. You just can't. Two more verses I want to look at here. Let's go to Philippians just for a moment. Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. Philippians 4, verses 7 and 8. Very simple thought here. This verse, or these two verses, are going to tell us what we should have our minds on. Verse 7. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Why does this seem like such foolishness to the world? Because we've passed their understanding. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and what? Your minds through Christ Jesus. Verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Don't think on the things that are going to cause you to worry. Don't think on the things that are going to cause you to stumble. Don't think on the things that are going to cause you to, to be anxious and, and have anxiety. Don't think on the things that are going to depress you and upset you and discourage you. Think on the things of God. Think on the good things. Think on the holy things. Think on the just things. Think on the righteous things. Think on those things. And when you think on those things, you will have the mind of Christ. And your mind has been renewed. And you've had that brain transplant. When you think on the things of God. And you forget about the things of the world. And the things of the devil. And you put all that stuff behind you. And you move on. That's what I want. If you want to have the mind of Christ. Think on things that are true. Things that are honest. Things that are just, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are good, things that have virtue, things that have praise. Think on these things. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Want to have the mind of Christ? Keep your hearts and minds pure? You want to, you want to, have that peace that passes understanding. Think on those things. Don't get worried about tomorrow. Don't feel bad about the past and the things that you've done before you were saved. Who cares? The devil might bring it up. Some people might bring it up. But who cares? You know who you are now in Christ. And God knows who you are now in Christ. So what happened before doesn't make any difference anymore. Praise the Lord. We're going to close with this last verse. We're going to go back now to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. Isaiah 26 and verse 3. And really, this is the crux of the issue here. Do you want to have peace? Do you want to have perfect peace? This verse is going to tell you how to get it. You know, we might say we want peace. But we don't want to do what we need to do to get it. Do you want perfect peace? Here's how to get it. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Perfect peace comes from keeping your mind on God. Keeping your eye on the prize. Keep looking for those rewards. Keep advancing the kingdom of heaven. Keep thinking on those things that Paul just told about in Philippians. Keep thinking on those things. And God will keep you in perfect peace. It doesn't matter what's going on around you. It doesn't matter what the world looks like around you. It doesn't matter what storms you're facing. You can have that perfect peace. But only if your mind is stayed on him. And not only that, but you trusteth in thee. You know, oftentimes, we think we've got things figured out, don't we? We need to learn how to trust. 
You know, there's a lot of people that are, are micromanagers. They want to micromanage their lives and, and other people's lives. And they have to be in control of everything. Well, let me tell you something. I'm more than willing to turn over control of my life to God because I trust him. Because I trust him. And if you're trying to control your own life, if you're trying to control your own destiny, if you're trying to control everything and you're not handing it and surrendering it over to God and leaving it at the cross and leaving for God to steer your boat. You're, you ever heard that expression, God can't steer a parked car? That's true. But there are some people that don't even want God in the driver's seat. They want God to be a backseat driver, and I'm sorry, God doesn't operate that way. If you want things to happen in your life, if you want God to use you, if you want the will of God for your life, the only thing you need to do is turn your life over to God and let Him steer you. Let Him direct you. Just trust Him. Just trust Him. Quit trusting yourself. Quit trusting your intellect. Quit trusting your judgment. But trust the Lord to lead you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. And he will not take you into any place where he will not protect you. Perfect peace comes from keeping and having the mind of Christ. But we need to trust the Lord. Here's an old chorus. I know the words, but I don't quite know the tune. I can't remember the tune. I think I know it. But we're going to sing it, and if I get the tune mixed up, I'm sorry, but the words are true. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, O Lord, whose mind is stayed on Thee. Whose mind is stayed on Thee. Whose mind is stayed on thee. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. O Lord, whose mind is stayed on thee. Keep your mind on the Lord. Trust him. Let him lead you. Don't try to, to overanalyze everything. Don't try to, to, to get sidetracked by things. Let God be in your driver's seat. Because you will have perfect peace if you keep your mind on him. And you allow him to lead you. That's why we have that Holy Spirit, that Holy Ghost within us. It's not there just to take up space. It's there to lead us. It's there to help us. It's there to comfort us. It's there for a lot of different reasons. But just taking up space isn't one of them. You've got the Spirit within you. You need to know how to use it and have the mind of Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful once again for the privilege and the opportunity that we have to be able to come together here on this uh, Facebook and YouTube channel, Lord, and to, to have church, Lord, and to worship you and to sing praises unto you, Lord, and to hear your word. We're so thankful for the ability to be able to do that today. What a wonderful blessing that is. And so I just pray, God, that this message will go to somebody that needed to hear it, somebody that their mind hasn't been where it should be, where they're wondering maybe why things aren't happening in their lives, why God why you seem so distant from them. Maybe why they're, they're having such depression and anxiety. Why are these things happening? Well, I just pray that this message just gave them that answer. I can almost guarantee somebody that's been watching this video has been praying, God, why are you so far away? Why am I having such horrible thoughts? Why am I having such horrible nightmares? Why am I having such depression and anxiety? Maybe it's because I need to get my mind on you. Maybe my mind has been on other things. Maybe my mind has been in my past. Maybe my mind has been on worrying about the future. But my mind needs to be on you, Lord. And I just pray, God, that this is an answer to their prayers. I pray, God, that as we leave here today and go about our week, I pray, God, that you'll be with us uh, wherever we go, whatever we do this week, Lord. I pray, God, that, uh, that we, you will keep us safe, Lord, and that we will come back again next week to hear 
what you have for us next week, Lord. And we pray all of these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So don't forget our Bible study, which is Wednesday night. We're going to be talking about the judgment seat of Christ. We're to that place in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. So I know it's going to be a blessing, and I know you're not going to want to miss it. So tune it in. Also, um, I hope you get a chance to watch that video I was telling you about that we put up on uh, answering the question, uh, can somebody who commits suicide go to heaven? And um, that's been something that I've been asked a couple of times in my ministry. People, even at work, have, have um, found out, you know, I, hey, I'm a Christian, I'm a, I'm a preacher, you know, and, and uh, they've asked me um, to answer those things. And so those are the types of questions that I try to answer on the channel. I know we haven't uh, done as many videos as, as, as I've been planning, but... Uh, you know, it, it's hard to find the time sometimes, but anyway, um, every once in a while we do put up a video up there where I answer a question, and so um, hopefully you'll get a chance to check that out. And so until next time, God bless.